travel. Former Minister of State, the Honorable Abdul Rashid Pelpo, is joining us on the line. Sir, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you, Omoro. So our correspondent is just telling us that something that happened a year or two ago in your in your constituency is repeating itself. W- what do you know so far as the MP? Well, uh, what I know is the tragic story about these murderers or serial killers who have gone to add two more people to the already um, situation we had um, last year where they killed so many other people, cutting off their throat, cutting off their genitals. And uh, in this particular situation, I know the report says that a tongue was taken of one of them. In another, his eyes were taken. And it does seem to me that this is ritual killing, a situation where people believe that by killing other human beings and taking some parts of their bodies, they will either be strong or they will be rich in 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 that manner well it still counts to how much backward we are in africa that just taking the life of a person and taking a part of his body you can be rich and you can be strong and it is saddening as it's so sad you know for me to know that these are breadwinners whose only um offenses that they have gone to end their living and then this treacherous person medras medras situation that we have uh, has taken their life. Now, this so is this similar to what happened the last time? It does. Uh, very similar. Very similar. First of all, the target is the same. Watchmen who are alone at night performing their duty have been trapped because they are far off from um, places where people live. They are shouting and crying and could not, cannot be heard. In one particular instance, a big stone was thrown at the head of the watchman or the, um, you know, the the disease, and then he died or he fainted, and they attacked him, cut off his throat, you know. And in a similar manner, this other person was trapped in a way he couldn't resist. They just killed him. So we 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 the, I think that the police must begin to think through this situation, that these are people who might not necessarily be living in war, and these are people whose beliefs you can easily uh, guess the kind of people they are. It is saddening that the investigation that con- that was um, started about a year and a half ago suddenly got to an end. No report has been made. Nobody has been caught. The few who were suspected have been released, and the tension is still on right now. The lives of people are, in, are, are at risk, and the security forces appear not to have answers to it. This is very, very disturbing and terrible. But the security people made some arrests. Uh, the, the matter leaves their hands as soon as they make the arrest and process the people for court, no? Yeah, this is subsequent to that. And I'm, I'm happy that this is happening, but it shouldn't just be the same kind of thing where... The people are arrested, and then nothing else is done. And the same people who are arrested, they later find that, oh, these are not the people who have caught it, or at least some interventions have come in, and they are released, and everything goes back to normal again. There must be a professional attachment to this investigation. The quality must go high. Somebody has to be seen. Some evidence has to be shown. I know the Ghana police can do it. And uh, it shouldn't just be um, a nine-day wonder of somebody being arrested and then subsequently released. The investigation should continue into years if they can find it now. And there must be some report to us that something is going on. Do you think maybe police checkpoints all across town would be helpful? What is the level of police presence in Watt Town? Um. The, 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 we have a good number of policemen in war, and uh, but the, I, I cannot confirm there are night operations. Night operation sometimes um, is, is non-existent. I have been in war often and often, and 
I, I carefully co- I mean, encounter police in the night, and I suspect that the criminals will take advantage of that and do what they are doing. The, the truth is that what people know police do can be avoided by criminals. So the police have to find a way of tracking them and getting them. And it has to be quickly done, and it has to be done in a much more smarter manner than anybody would imagine. If we, we depend on um, just seeing somebody and looking at him and thinking that he could be the person, suspect him and arrest him, that is not sufficient enough. There must be some um, internal, internal scrutiny of what happened. You must be willing to pay people for getting information to us, and we must be willing to investigate every information to the details. Because the situation is carrying people, is putting the town in a very uh, into a situation of fear, and I, I think that that should not be a situation we know in Wa. Wa is a lively place, very peaceful place. Carefully, do we have such a thing happening? My my first suspicion is that these are people who are going to learn something somewhere and are coming to implement it in in in, in Wa or people who have had this situation, practiced this situation in some other places and have moved to war and want to implement it. So please, I think that um, the, the, the media should help us to reach out to the police, reach out to the Syria minister to go beyond the normal policing we do. This cannot be acceptable, and we cannot continue to endure this year after year. Lives are lost, and it, it it's becoming normal, a normal situation in our life. It shouldn't be. Okay. You raised it in Parliament today. What was the purpose, and did you get any solutions? Uh, essentially, what we did in Parliament today is to draw attention to Parliament and to the people of Ghana, the situation that we have in war, and to call on the interior minister and the police to do more than they are doing now. Um, it shouldn't be business as usual. We want an inspect action on it, and we want to draw the attention of the general public about the operations of these people and to call on people who may know them to come out and report. Because this, you don't know who is going to be, tack- who, will, who, who will be tackled the next, who will be the next person to die. If we allow this thing to happen, the security of the whole town, the whole country, will be in jeopardy. And so it's important for me that through Parliament I draw attention to it and call on the public and the media and the police themselves to work towards achieving, getting the people and getting them through our legal system and getting some punishment to them so it could be deterrent to the to the to the manner in which the the operate in taking lives just because of something we can't understand. Thank you so much for speaking to us and we pray that something proper happens, something um, successful happens. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you, Moro. I appreciate it.